How does Post Malone construct his melodies? What exactly is he doing that makes him stand out from other artists? That makes every single one of his melodies so unbelievably catchy? And how can you use the same strategies to construct amazing melodies of your own? What's up guys, my name is Connor, and today we're going to talk about some of the secrets behind Post Malone's melody construction. Post Malone is an artist that's been able to seamlessly slide between a bunch of different musical lanes and genres and find success every single time. He's dabbled in hip-hop, pop, rock, and now with his latest album, F1 Trillion, he's gone country. The cool thing about Post Malone is he's a fan of music in general. What did you do to pull yourself out of this depression that you're in? It was music. He has a ton of different stylistic influences, and they all blend together to create his own unique style. This sort of cross-pollination between different styles and influences has helped him create his own signature sound. On top of that, his voice and vocal production help as well. He's got an uncharacteristically raspy voice with a super warbly fast vibrato. I'm waiting on you! And he also sort of mumbles as he sings, and uses a lot of autotune in his vocal production. But when you start to dissect his music and pick apart the different melodies, motifs, ideas that he uses on a regular basis, you find that there are patterns, there's a method to his madness. And even as he switches lanes and styles and genres, he still does a lot of these same things. So what exactly is he doing? So maybe the number one signature melody habit that Post Malone has is to just sit on a single note and sing rapid fire eighth notes. The man loves his eighth notes. He will pick a note, often the one, two, or the three of whatever major key he's singing in, and just machine gun fire lyrics at you holding on that note. What does the one, two, or three mean? Well, here's a major scale. The one, the two, and the three are the first three notes of that scale. So here's a few examples. In his songs Rockstar and Better Now, he just sits on the one. In his song I Had Some Help from his new album, and also his song Rich and Sad, he just sits on the two. And in his song, Congratulations and What Don't Belong to Me, he sits on the three. My mama calls, see you on TV. I get half to them halfway lovers. I left some to them two drunk summers. He doesn't exclusively use these scale degrees, but the combination of the single note and the rapid-fire eighth notes pays homage to his hip-hop influence. Often those melodies come out feeling half-rapped, half-sung, and it creates a very catchy and rhythmic pattern that sits very nicely over whatever beat he's rap-singing on. The second thing he does is often he will start with a very short, low melody, and then following that, expand it to a higher, longer melody. It's like he's throwing the pitch and then hitting the ball, almost like a call-and-response sort of situation. By doing this, he creates a little bit of suspense with the first melody motif and almost asks a question. And then by the time he gets to the second motif, because it's longer, often a little more catchier, it goes up higher, it feels like a worthwhile payoff to the initial question motif that he asked in the first place. Here's a few songs where he uses that strategy. I like you. The third melody trick that he'll use on a consistent basis is he'll often surprise the listener by very suddenly and without any warning jumping up high to a target note. Oftentimes this note is the 5 in whatever major key he's using. He'll be sitting on some melody down by the 1 and the 2 and then boom he'll jump up to the 5 for a single note or maybe two notes and it feels like you're being lifted by the melody, like it's sort of launching you into the air. This is something he does absolutely constantly and I'm gonna just rapid fire off a bunch of examples. But this is the way The 
fourth trick that he uses is he really leans into repetition of motifs and ideas. This is also something that borrows heavily from his hip-hop background. Specifically, what he will do is he will take the exact same melody motif, repeat it exactly three times, and then change it on the fourth time. It establishes the pattern that allows the listener to get into a groove and think that they expect what's coming. And then the fourth time, he offers a little bit of variety, just enough to keep things interesting and novel. I can put some diamonds around your neck Dancing in a ruby red sunset The fifth thing he does, and the final trick we'll talk about, is again hearkening back to his steady use of eighth notes. Like we talked about earlier, he'll often just pick a note and sit on that note rapid firing off eighth notes without changing the pitch. But there's another very similar trick that he will use where he alternates between two different eighth notes and sort of just goes back and forth between them. It's usually not huge jumps, it's typically just one or two notes apart in the scale, but this creates a sort of warbling pattern where you feel like it's shaking you back and forth a little bit. And that combined with his warbling vibrato actually feels really nice. A few examples of this are I had some help, wrong ones, and wow. So obviously Post Malone is a very gifted musician and one of the preeminent melody writers in today's pop scene. So this video is just the tip of the iceberg on all the different tricks and strategies that he uses. But as a general framework for understanding the principles he uses to construct melodies, these five things are a great place to start. So what do you think? Does this sum it up? Are there any obvious tricks or patterns or ideas that he uses that I missed? And have you ever used any of these in your own songwriting? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one.